First off, what I use is the one-shot reducers. I believe if you're going to use one-shot, uh, their reducers and thinners are, are made, they're formulated to go with that paint. So in here we have the uh, reducer 6000. In here is going to be a mixture basically of the low temp reducer and a little bit of 6000. What I did here is I built myself a nice little stand. It has a little rag here. I can wipe my fingers. Got my paper towels on it right here. I got my palette right here. It's a little cup here. It's another condiment cup. This is what I put my uh, reducers in. Popsicle sticks. Stabilo pencil holder. It's a little plastic ruler. That ruler is plastic. It's flexible. It's not going to scratch anybody's paint. So for today, we're just going to run a couple pinstripes. I'm going to set the camera over here. Okay, for a layout, I typically use 3M three-quarter inch tape. I'm partial to the 232 because it is a little bit thicker. Uh, it's what I've been using for 30 some odd years. Basically, take it, we all know, pull a nice straight line, pull it tight, set it down, boom, you're done. Take your one shot. I open the can when I first buy it. I drop a nut or a bolt inside there. Makes a really nice rattle can. Just like you would with a you know rattle can paint can. I poke a hole in the lid so we no longer have to worry about the paint skinning over. Use a screw, cap it, it keeps the air out. Again, tail, wipe your fingers, take your reducer, a few drops of that in there. This is the ticket right here. This is what makes or breaks a good stripe job for me. You got to get the reducer, you got to get the right combination of paint, get the right consistency, and that's a little bit thick. Take a little reducer, and what I do here is I pre-thin the paint. I want to get the viscosity just about right to my likings. That's about it. It's just a matter of looking at it, seeing it. After you've done this for a few years, you guys will figure it out. That's about the right viscosity. So, as far as a brush, I can pull long lines all day long with this. I don't have to worry about looking at the line. It's a matter of all I really watch is my gap between the tape and the stripe, the brush, using a good brush is uh, going to allow me to concentrate more on the gap as opposed to, to what the brush is doing. Now that we have the paint mixed to the right consistency, uh, I'm going to take that brush, I'm going to load that brush, and I'm going to move this just so you can see. We're going to load the brush just like we would any other brush. Work it back and forth, work it into the heel, work it into the bristles. These are blue squirrel or brown squirrel, depending on what you get. The MAC is typically a, a blue squirrel. So now we got the paint mixed up good. Feels good. I like to take my popsicle stick, lay it on its side, pull the paint through. That ensures that the mixture is all the way through that brush. It's all the same. Now another key feature I do, the dreaded glove. And with the glove, it, it always allows you to... Uh, to have the same amount of drag no matter if it's you know hot out or cold out or whatever. So I cut the fingers out so I can do my thing. Got the brush loaded up. So from my perspective, again I'm just concentrating on the distance that brush has against that tape. I'm having to watch the camera and the stripes, so it kind of makes it tricky. But that'll pretty much give you the idea. Typically, you can see that line pulled away from that tape, but you got to understand, I'm holding a, uh, I'm holding a camera and I'm trying to stripe at the same time, so.
Simple as that. The deal is, with, with me using three quarter inch tape, I use three quarter inch tape because I've, I've learned to get a feel for that tape to run on my middle finger. And when I put my brush here, my middle finger, that's a pretty damn good gap of where my fingers fit together here. I can only move my fingers so far. So I've tried it with three quarter inch or a quarter inch tape and I find myself having to squeeze my fingers together to try to do this. Um, so for me, three quarter inch is a ticket. Again, I can use the tape on the opposite side and by doing so, I can run this line right below it. And again, all I'm watching is the gap. I don't care what the brush is doing because the brush is, is, if you get a good brush, it's going to hold its own. And all you have to do is concentrate on the space. Here we can just get a little loose with it, and I'll just follow the curvature of that fender, or quarter panel rather. So let's see, so we can just take this, run this down. kind of goofing around obviously the whole purpose of this video is just to give you an idea of what I'm doing but you notice my hand isn't squeaking it isn't dragging it isn't chattering and that's thanks to that glove it's all in the mixing of the paint the consistency a good brush and for me a good glove and a nice three-quarter inch line to follow